Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Banterweight Boxing Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Waite, and welcome to the Pound for Pound Best Boxing Podcast around. Let's start this off with some introductions. Guys, want to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Johan. Evening all, I'm Jimmy. How's it going, guys? Joe, over here. All right, so today we are talking about the big fight between Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, and Deontay Wilder, the Alabama Hammer. So as for a bit of context for you viewers who may have been living under a rock, let's just give some background about these fights or, you know, the trilogy for this for this fight. So these guys first fought a while ago now in quite a competitive bout, um, you know, Fury dominating mainly with the jab on points, but then Wilder scoring two huge knockdowns and one right at the end of the fight. And we almost got a WWE finish with The Undertaker rising from the dead in Tyson Fury and going on to fight on the round. A um, lot of people think Tyson Fury won that fight, me being one of those. But going back and looking at it now, it was... It was definitely a Tyson Fury win, but it was more competitive than I think some people remember. Um, and I think we were all happy to see the second fight. In the second fight, we got a Fury domination where he switched it up completely and walked Wilder down, knocking him out pretty early on. And now we've got the trilogy fight, the third fight to decide it all. Um, so we got, we got some questions on this. We're going to go through it um and yeah get some predictions so let's go joe going over to you first you know what do you make of this fight how do you see this fight playing out the trilogy well first and foremost i'm really looking forward to it now it's fight week obviously everyone wanted to see sort of alternative fights but i think everyone can agree that now we're actually seeing this trilogy we are all pretty much in the mood for it um it's teed up nicely obviously with with a fury win and a draw um that's sort of leading me to think I'm going to go for a prediction of, of Wilder Wilder knocking him out. I think we've seen so many upsets in boxing recently. Yeah, uh, It's all to play for. Wilder's changed his coach. and He's only one punch away from winning it. And I'm going to go back to how we were thinking about the fight when it first got announced all those years ago when they fought for the first time. He's got the power to do it. And I see it going that way. I don't know. I think Fury might take his, his, uh, his foot off the gas a little bit. Had a load of time out. Um, and, you know, heavyweight boxing has been surprising us recently. Yeah, so yeah, I like that bold. I like that bold prediction, and you just spoke yeah, about the layoff a little bit because, and there has been a lot of upsets, and I, I appreciate, I, I get where you're coming from. So are you saying then you think the layoff for Tyson for both fighters with the big break is going to benefit Deontay Wilder? Is that is that? What I you think, think I think that does favour Wilder because all he could have done in that time is he's not going to have lost his power, but he could have tightened up his skills, maybe fighting on the back foot, perhaps. I, I don't think we'll see a masterclass performance from Wilder, and I don't think he would have improved drastically with a new trainer or whatever. But I think when he's in there for 12 more rounds, um, he's going to be fitter, hungrier, and ultimately he's got, just got to land that one, what do you call it, Alabama hammer, or mm. the slammer or whatever. Um, so yeah, I, just, I just fancy him. It's, it's close, but I fancy him. You say, you say that he's got the power, but in that first fight, he sent Fury into the afterlife and Fury rose again. What more power does a mortal man have? How many times what, has Christ what, what, risen? What? How many times has Christ risen? Only <laughs> once. If that happens again. Yeah. I just... I, I, we, we, where, where, where I side with Joe is that there's something in the air and a number of commentators have picked up on it where they're, where, where they're starting to talk about Wilder as having a chance in this fight. I cannot think of any any rematch or any trilogy where the second fight has been that dominant where anyone has thought that it was worth having a third fight. Yeah, yeah. after that second fight, I just thought, what, what's going on? I can't... Well, let me pose you a question, yeah, because I've been hearing the same thing in the media. I've had a yeah. lot of uh, support for Deontay Wilder. And almost I was the same. I was like, where's this coming from? Yeah. Like, did everyone see that second fight? You Is know, something we've, we've not missed? Yeah, it wasn't a contest. Yeah. But is it the fact that they're just trying to sell the fight? Sell the is it fight because yeah. people weren't, they didn't want yeah. to see it. So now they're going, all right, actually, you know, we've seen something in the training camp. You know, Wilder's got something. You're like, but, but, they, but I, they have, I have heard that sentiment. So it is funny where that could be coming from. But he's, he, I, I, it must, I mean, he's 36 years old. 
You know, he's, he's not he's not young. I don't understand what 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 he's going to learn in one training camp that he hasn't already picked up on, or or the or, or that he could undo some of his flaws. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess what Joe's saying is right. He's got that the Alabama hammer. But, I think I, mean, I think the issue for me with um, with Wilder is I think you can never really come back and beat someone until you actually accept culpability and responsibility for the first. Defeat. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because I think yeah. that's what worries me the most is that he's just been in denial for eighteen months, like that fight never happened, and it's yeah. excuse after excuse after excuse. Now, look, he may have a completely different mindset behind closed doors and I hope he does because if he has that mindset behind closed doors he's getting knocked out very quickly by Tyson Fury because Mm -hmm. to come back from that you really there's no one to blame but yourself you got beaten up and that's fine you can come back and he has got the power as we all know to beat Tyson Fury but he's first of all got to accept that the better man won in that second fight everyone else has accepted it he seems like the only person on the planet that hasn't yeah, I've never seen someone so mentally defeated from a fight, so mentally battered by a loss. Like, he literally looked like, you know... Yeah, but the fuckers put something in effect. his water, didn't they? What did you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They put something in his water. Probably and Tyson I mean, pissed in it. Really... I reckon if anything happened, Tyson probably pissed in it. Someone from Tyson's camp yeah, pissed yeah, in his yeah. water. Billy Joe, most definitely. Most likely. There was poison yeah. when he licked him on his tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a frog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But to be fair, we, he did make Wilder bleed from his ears. So, you know, he physically probably yeah. damaged yeah. his brain quite I think badly. It's always interesting when you see, you know, you saw when Joshua first got lost um, against Ruiz, you know, you see someone so dominant like Wilder is to get bullied like that and get hurt so visibly. It is mm. quite a shock. And I think quite a shock mm. to him. I just, you know, I just don't think he ever thought that would ever happen to him. Um, but yeah, I hope- when you're on the other end, usually, when, you know, you've had 40 fights and you've been, you know, pretty much yeah. killing people in the ring, flatlining people in the ring, and then mm. for it to happen the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, fa- I'm fascinated who, to see it. I'm, f- I'm fascinated who, to see it. Yeah, whoever knew that pillow hands could make you bleed out of your ears? I guess that is humiliating, right? If you spent an entire pre <laughs> glove gate, you know, glove gate, glove gate, man. Glove gate, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but let me get so we've heard what Joe thinks he's going to go down. He's predicting a wild KO, love it. A bit left field, I'd, I'd say. Yo, it's, and, bold. You know, it's bold, it's bold, it's bold, but you know, no one watches this, so you can get away. <laughs> you can get away. Um, but yo and Jim, what, what would uh, uh, well, I think we sorry, go I, on, Jim. Yo, yo and first. Sorry, I should have uh, well. The only interesting thing you can say that gives the fight a bit of like lends it a bit of glamour is the idea that Wilder will knock him out because what else can you say about the fight? You can either say, well, Fury will win it on points or Fury will walk him down and knock him out again. So those are Fury's two options. And then Wilder's option is to pull some kind of punch out of of thin air. I mean, it's funny. So last week we're talking about Andy Joshua looking for a miracle and I think of all of the heavyweights, the one that can just hang around waiting for a miracle is Deontay Wilder. And he might pull that miracle off, that miracle punch. But um, yeah, I, I, just for just for fun, I would say, yeah, Wilder via knockout, round six. But but really, I just think, and it, I think Joe's right, like it's fight weeks, so you get a bit excited. But I think this is of all of the matchups that, 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 that are happening at the moment, this is the only one where I really, even though it features a fighter I really like, I find it very hard to get excited about it and to talk um, and to find it interesting to think about how, who's going to win and how. Mm. But while the six round knockout, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I got it wrong last week and I gave it a lot of thought. So um, yeah, the, you've the never instinct. got it right, mate. So don't, don't, you've never got it right. I don't know shit about, I can't even say his accent. I don't know shit about boxing. Yeah, we'll edit that bit out. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, if, is it, I think Yoan summed it up quite nicely there. Um, I think I would like to see a competitive fight, very similar to the first. I thought the first one was real entertainment. I thought Fury outboxed him for the majority, but it just had that drama. It had that sort of Hollywood feel to it with the two knockdowns. I'd yeah. love to see... If we can get half the excitement in the third fight, then we 
that we did in the first. And I, I think, you know, I'll take that. Um, very difficult to see past Fury. I know they both went for the Wilder knockout and that is a distinct possibility. But I just think with Fury delaying the fight, I don't think Fury was probably ready for the fight. I think the fact that he's delayed it with COVID. Um, yeah, that's pretty delayed. dodgy. Yeah. I he's think looking probably, very heavy. Yeah, I think... I think he's got Wilder's number. I think he's figured him out. He's a very intelligent fighter, Fury. He's fought him twice now. He knows what his strengths are. He yeah. knows what his weaknesses are. I think he's more. He's very adaptable. I don't think Wilder possesses that same boxing IQ. For that reason, I think Tyson will be able to dodge, you know, those big, heavy hands. What, what dodge, Probably. duck and dive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna to go for a very sexy, flashy um, prediction and go, Fury on points. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Think, um, sorry, you go. Yeah. What are you gonna say? Do you think that that Wilder will have worked on and been successful at the skies in his right hand, which was in the news a month or so ago? They talked a lot about what is it, Malik Scott, who's training him, and they said they're gonna work on on um, not telegraphing his punches as much as he typically does. Do you think there's any any chance that that actually will happen? And that he's got more opportunity to catch Fury with those punches that that for most of the two fights they've had, Fury has seen come in from quite some distance. See, I, I think it depends upon the tactics Fury, um, you know, what decides to go for. Obviously, in the first fight, it was very much stick and move, outbox him, outclassing him, you know, very Billy Joe Saunders sort of technique. And obviously that came with risks and he got dropped twice. He then in the second fight adapted a completely different tactics and went, you know, closed off the ring, took the centre ground, hunted him down. And, you know, so it's interesting. I wonder if it probably won't. I think seeing Joshua lose last weekend and, you know, the risks of the heavyweight division, you know, could that tempt him to take a bit more of a cautious, conservative approach? I don't think so. But I do think he needs to adopt that dominant style to avoid those hands, because I think where he's sticking and moving and floating, like you know, floating around the ring, I think that's where you are a bit more liable to get hit. When you're hurting someone, you yeah, know, they just don't have time to did, think about it. They're just getting punched in the face. Did you hear what Mike Tyson said? I might be misquoting Mike Tyson, but did you hear what he said about the speed of Wilder in comparison to AJ and what that would mean in a fight with Fury? He said that if Fury could see. Deontay Wilder's punches come in and Deontay Wilder has got faster hands than AJ, that AJ wouldn't be able to lay a glove. I'm, I'm, I'm misquoting Tyson, but it's kind of ty Mike Tyson. I'm misquoting him, but yeah. I'm sure he said words to that effect, which I found well, quite yeah, interesting. I'd, I'd say one of Wilder's probably strongest attributes is, pardon the pun, his wild nature of he is quite yeah. erratic and hard. He's, you know, he's unorthodox. So it's very difficult to train to fight someone like that because you don't know where the arms are coming from and if I don't think like, Wilder knows when he's probably yeah well exactly exactly um the Wilder my, kid, my kids fight like that, that. yeah yeah <laughs> but um in our in answer to your question as well yeah and about the disguising of the punches I, I hope so I hope he's trained on that because that is the only hope for the fight to make it uh, a competitive yeah fight. that's yeah yeah if he's yeah. worked on some way of uh, disguising that right hand because we've seen in previous fights with him he likes to lead the left hand hanging out to try and time time the right hand and it's very predictable yeah. and in the second fight fury he was onto it pretty easily yeah so hopefully yeah. hopefully they found um some way some ways of well, doing it. It, it i mean it's going to be hard at his age to 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 do that on one level that's what some of the, the majority of commentators have said but in a way if he starts the fight telegraphing his punches in the way that he's done previously he could really easily lure Tyson Fury into a trap, couldn't he? If yeah. he kind of thinks that Tyson Fury's fighting the same fighter, and then he, uh, I don't know, maybe, I maybe I'm giving him too much credit. But I think it's actually you touch upon quite a good point. I think probably the biggest risk to Fury is underestimating Wilder. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think yeah. you know that is a real risk because the one thing Wilder will go into that fight is he will have a point to prove. You know, he was humiliated yeah. in that second fight. Yeah. You know, there's nothing what? he'll want more. What point does it does it make? What 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 statement does it make if Wilder beats Fury? What does that mean? Do you think for the for the heavyweight landscape? Yeah, well, I, I think that just it? I think it shows anything and anyone could beat anyone on their day, and I think that's been shown throughout 
watching AJ Usyk. And I think it, it makes it a far more fascinating division because for so long we've sort of planned the next fight because we, we expect AJ to beat this man, so then AJ will fight Fury. Maybe it's yeah. not between AJ and Fury. Maybe that's not the mega fight. Maybe we're seeing how styles really do make fights and maybe yeah. AJ will beat Wilder, but Wilder can beat Fury. But Fury will beat AJ. And I think that is the beauty of boxing is that stars make fights and anything can happen when you're one punch away from being a champion you're going to see it, it would be result. but Joe wouldn't, wouldn't you think it would be the beauty of boxing if they actually all didn't fight each other but the, the problem is is that they don't well yeah that's Absolutely. what everyone was hoping for isn't it to get that throwback yeah. to the kind of 90s heavyweight scene isn't it yeah um, I think Fury would be pissed as well if he lost because they wouldn't get another fight so Wilder would in a way with one win, would win the trilogy because yeah. in a way, oh, yeah, yeah. even though Fury is kind of Goes won both fights, win, yeah. if Wilder wins this yeah. one, he, he wins overall. So I think uh, I think if 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 Fury wins, although look, I'm a big Fury fan, and you know my, my yeah. support will be with him. Yeah. It's sort of with a victory of Fury, you sort of finish going. Well, already knew that he could beat Wilder. You haven't learned anything. Yeah. From yeah. Whereas if Wilder yeah. wins, you're like, oh wow, like that changes the whole complexion of the yeah. heavyweight division. You know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. What's well, left for Wilder if he loses, Jim? The good question. Well, I think there's a lot. AJ, I, think a lot. I, I think people want to. I don't think people really want to see the AJ Usyk rematch. You know, I think if Wilder loses, I'd much rather they just went AJ Wilder make yeah, that. Yeah. I want to. If anything, right now, good. that's that's my favorite fight. That's my favorite. I don't care yeah, about that. Is, yeah, yeah. I don't but care. That, I want to see that, that, that fight. But that, that, that fight has been on the cards for so long, hasn't yeah. it? You know, we've talked about that yeah. for years, that Joshua Wilder fight. I think, you know, they're both <laughs> big, heavy hitters, aren't they? It would be such an exciting fight to see. Mm. I think as well, what we're, we're all sort of touching on here is what we've all sort of established that. I personally, I don't know if you lot agree with me, I don't care who is the king of the heavyweight division. I would prefer to see everyone fight everyone. And yeah, if I would yeah. rather than be one undisputed, all the belts, I don't really care about that. I just want to see the fights. And that's what's most important to me. Yeah, I've gotten a bit sick of the belts. I don't really I don't really care about that anymore. I'll kind of I don't care if AJ fights you wilder for nothing or if we see exactly. you know, I don't care about the belts. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see yeah, no, North Korea is more legit than those fucking heavyweights. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. yeah, and what's worrying is you know they they're getting on now. A lot of the heavyweights, you know, we mentioned Wilder. How old were we saying? Is he thirty? I think he's thirty six. I might be wrong, but I think he's thirty six. You know, but and you know, Fury also the, they are getting on. So we want to see it now before it's you know. I don't yeah. want to see forty year olds. The the you know. uh, the other thing that's happened recently, and I think maybe it's with Mayweather, is that the the undefeated title has become significant, whereas mm. I don't think it is at all mm. and I think the fact that Wilder's had a loss AJ's had a couple of losses it might actually be a good thing if Fury has a loss and loses that nonsense about yeah. being this kind of miracle yeah. man mm. and people just get get into fighting each other yeah. I mean all of the great fighters have got losses on their records all yeah. of them without yeah. exception there's no I, I, I think it's an overrated like the belts, it's just an overrated title to hold. And and the UFC, it's as an organisation or MMA, I say, has proven that because in yeah. in their kind of uh, sphere, no one cares about the losses at all. It's not even mm. not even spoken about. I think like, you're a better fighter if you can come back from one. I think that shows yeah, really yeah, yeah. has the grit. Yeah. Anyway, I think this is a nice nice place to round it up. In my view, I'm going a bit boring. I think I'm looking at another Fury knockout. I can't really. I'm, I'm going to be the voice of reason, the boring one. Just we left so we you no know. choice for that one, Mike. We literally yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't really say um, Bob Aaron by decision. He, you know, <laughs> he, come, he comes in the ring or oh, Bob Aaron knockout. He comes in and takes her, takes Wilder out. Um, but yeah, I think I, I see. I think it'll be more competitive, definitely. I think um, I think it'll be later on, round round seven or so. I think Fury will TKO him. But yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, enjoy the fight. I, I think it's going to be a good one. And I think yeah. it's going to set up some even better ones. Um, but yeah, tune in next week and we'll give it a little review uh, and we'll look over it. But anyway, does everyone want to give a little wave goodbye and let's sign out? Good night. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks for everyone. listening. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Yeah. And remember Cheers. to like and subscribe and good night.